China's economy is worse than expected. Big changes ahead, a CCP insider reveals. The Chinese government is heavily in debt. Analysts, Beijing has limited room for fiscal stimulus. Nearly 40 major shareholders of A-share companies reduced their holdings in one day, with some cashing out 150 million yuan. Wang Duruo of Apollo.com reports that the Chinese stock market has stopped rising for several days, and selling pressure has emerged. At the close on Wednesday, October 9th, the Chinext index plummeted by 10.59%, the Shanghai Composite Index dropped 6.62%, and the Shenzhen Component Index fell 8.15%, dealing a severe blow to market confidence. Does this mean that China's economic difficulties have reached an unexpectedly dire situation? Regarding this, Lao Man, a well-known economic observer who once worked in China's land department and has a large following, commented that the background of this rescue can be analyzed from two perspectives. First, the central government's fiscal revenue, and second, consumption in major cities. Fiscal revenue has decreased by 30% per month, and consumption in major cities has frozen. Behind this is the sluggish real estate industry and the Chinese government's regulation of specific industries. While investment institutions initially applauded these efforts, experts familiar with China's problems, or those within China's industry and academia, have been more cautious about this rescue package. Looking at the top priority housing market, Stephen Roach, former chief economist at Morgan Stanley and a longtime friend of the Chinese Communist Party, once known as a Wall Street China expert, said that China's latest financial stimulus measures are impressive. However, the current fiscal plan still lacks clear details on how to effectively deal with the further decline of the real estate market. Take Country Garden, a giant in China's real estate industry, as an example. In 2023, it had around 36,000 houses that were completed but unsold, approximately 350,000 houses that were under construction but unsold, and 730,000 houses that were sold but not yet completed. This is the core of the problem and the most dangerous battlefield for ensuring delivery of completed buildings. According to Lu Ting, the chief economist for Nomura Securities in China, an estimated 3 trillion yuan, around 13.7 trillion new Taiwan dollars, of fiscal injection will be needed to solve this crisis. On the 8th, Ray Dalio, founder of Bridgewater Associates and another longtime friend of the CCP, said at an international forum that investment in China must be extremely cautious at present, as China seems to be fundamentally distancing itself from capitalism. Big things are happening there, including a debt crisis. They also have a capitalist crisis. The Chinese government is heavily in debt. Analysts, Beijing has limited room for fiscal stimulus. The Information Office of the State Council of the Communist Party of China announced that the Ministry of Finance will hold a press conference this Saturday, October 12th, to provide information on increasing fiscal policy adjustments, once again raising public expectations for fiscal stimulus measures. However, some analysts have pointed out that due to the heavy government debt burden, the fiscal stimulus space is limited and expectations should not be too high. On Tuesday, October 8th, the National Development and Reform Commission, NDRC, of the Communist Party of China did not introduce new fiscal measures as the market had expected, leading to a significant cooling of the Chinese and Hong Kong stock markets. On Wednesday, October 9th, the Communist Party of China officially announced that the Information Office of the State Council would hold a press conference this Saturday morning where Finance Minister Lan Fuan would introduce plans to intensify the countercyclical adjustment of fiscal policy. Whether Beijing will launch a new large-scale fiscal stimulus package has become a key focus for public opinion both at home and abroad. 
Hong Kong's English language media, the South China Morning Post, reported on October 9th that officials from the National Development and Reform Commission said on Tuesday that they would accelerate government spending, increase investment, and continue issuing ultra-long-term government bonds to support major projects. They also moved forward the 100 billion yuan strategic investment plan originally scheduled for 2025 to this year. However, some analysts have pointed out that the window to support China's economic recovery through fiscal expansion may be narrower than previously thought, as the government is already heavily in debt, limiting the space for fiscal stimulus. The report quoted Zhang Deli, chief macro researcher at Zhongtai Securities, as saying that considering the sharp decline in land transfer revenue, the largest source of income for local governments, local governments' actual income may decrease by 3.4 trillion yuan this year. Many analysts believe that given Beijing's concerns over local government debt, there is limited room for official fiscal stimulus. Zhu Qibing, chief macro analyst at Bank of China International Securities, bluntly stated that local government debt risks will limit fiscal expansion to some extent. The key for this year's fiscal policy is to relax fiscal constraints rather than increase stimulus. We should not have too high expectations for subsequent fiscal policies this year, he said. Ding Shuang, chief economist for Greater China at Standard Chartered Bank, also pointed out that by the end of 2023, central and local government debt would account for 56% of GDP, gross domestic product. If local government's hidden debt is included, the figure could rise to 100%. It is unrealistic to expect the government to expand fiscal spending when local government tax revenue is shrinking. On September 10th, at the 11th meeting of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, Minister of Finance Lan Fuan read out the Report on the Management of Government Debt in 2023 on behalf of the State Council. According to the report, as of the end of 2023, the statutory debt balance of governments at all levels across the country reached 70.77 trillion yuan. Among this, the national debt balance is 30.03 trillion yuan, and the local government statutory debt balance is 40.74 trillion yuan. Of the 11.14 trillion yuan in national debt issued in 2023, 4.16 trillion yuan was used to cover the central fiscal deficit, 5.22 trillion yuan to repay the principal of national debt issued in previous years that matured in 2023, and 1.76 trillion yuan to cover short-term national debt issued and maturing within the same year. It is worth noting that the above report from the Ministry of Finance only covers the scale and use of the so-called legal debt on the government's books and does not mention the even larger hidden debts of governments at all levels. Previously, the Wall Street Journal reported in July this year that many Chinese cities have accumulated between U7 trillion dollars, about RMB 50 trillion, and U11 trillion dollars, about RMB 78 trillion, in hidden debt for economic development over the years. Due to the opaque financing methods, the actual total debt of local governments in China is unknown. Even the central government is unclear, with estimates suggesting that up to 800 billion US dollars of this debt is at high risk of default. A report by the research institution Rhodium Group pointed out that, among the nearly 2,900 local government financing platforms evaluated by the institution in 2023, only one-fifth had sufficient cash to cover short-term debts and interest. Under the pressure of financial deterioration and debt, many local officials began looking for unconventional sources of income, even resorting to extreme measures such as exploitation and intimidation of private enterprises. Nearly 40 major shareholders of A-share companies reduced their holdings in one day, with some cashing out 150 million yuan, after a significant surge over several days, the Chinese stock market suddenly plunged on Wednesday, October 9th, with the three major stock indexes falling sharply. According to statistics, major shareholders of nearly 40 listed companies reduced their holdings on that day, and some companies saw shareholders liquidate their shares. Other major shareholders planned to reduce their holdings and cash out 150 million yuan. 
Since the start of the current round of A-share surges, at least 250 companies have issued announcements of reductions. Stimulated by a series of policies from the Beijing authorities, A-shares had risen steadily since September 24th, peaking on September 30th. However, they began to turn downward after the National Day Golden Week. On Tuesday, October 8th, A-shares exhibited a roller coaster performance, fluctuating throughout the day. Although gains were halved, the market still closed on an upward trend. However, on Wednesday, the market experienced a large-scale cutting leaks trend, with the three major A-share indexes plunging sharply. As of the close on October 9th, the Shanghai Composite Index fell 6.62% to 3,258.86 points. The CSI 300 Index dropped 7.05% to 3,955.98 points. And the Shenzhen Component Index declined 8.15% to 10,557.81 points. The plunge was driven by a large number of major shareholders reducing their holdings to cash out. According to statistics from the Wabe Research Institute, after the A-share market's rise at the end of September, around 10 listed companies per day saw their major shareholders reduce holdings. On October 9th, at least 38 major shareholders of listed companies announced reductions, five more than on the previous trading day, October 8th. This indicates that, following the National Day holiday, the pace of holdings reductions by major shareholders has accelerated significantly, with the intensity of reductions also increasing. According to Nanduan Finance, since the A-share market rebounded on September 24th, as of October 8th, at least 256 listed companies have issued announcements of share reductions, with 136 companies disclosing plans to reduce their holdings. Around the National Day holiday, the number of companies announcing share reductions increased significantly, with 28 and 52 companies disclosing plans on September 30th and October 8th, respectively. Whether this wave of major shareholders' share reductions is a temporary phenomenon of the technical correction in the Chinese stock market or a sign of a flash in the pan for the overall A-share market rebound remains to be seen.